So I just started taking art jobs right out of high school and I illustrated children's books and I did murals and um, graphic design work and custom portraits and pretty much anything anyone wanted me to do. And it just sort of snowballed. I started joining art collectives online and we would do shows together. So I would get in touch with galleries and it's awesome. It, it's crazy. You know, I still can't believe that people want to buy my art. <laughs> Welcome to the Conscious Rebel Podcast with your host, Lucy Morningstar. Hello, Julia. Thank you so much for coming to the Conscious Rebel. I'm so happy to have you. Yes, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Can you please just tell us um, who you are, what you do, um, a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I'm Julia Gabrielov, and I'm a Ukrainian-born artist. Um, and I sort of uh, grew up all over the place. My family immigrated from the Ukraine when I was two, and we lived in New York for most of my childhood, and then in Virginia, and now I live in Florida with my husband. Um, so I am a fantasy surrealism artist, is what I like to describe it as. I do a little bit of realistic women mixed with nature and fantasy and animals, and I just try to like combine everything together. Um, and, you know, just sort of let it lead me to whatever it's going to yeah, be. Yeah, and, 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 and your work is really beautiful. And I'll for sure put some yeah. images um, on the video. They have this soft, um, this kind of soft, gentle beauty to them and, and, and light. That's how I use the white space. Like, I, I really yeah. like that. Thank so, you so much. Have you always um, been an artist? Like, when did you start uh, practicing art? Yeah, I've been an artist pretty much my entire life. I've always loved to draw. Um, I made my mom draw with me when I was little. And then I just doodled all over my notebooks and everything in school. And I just knew that that's that I just it's all I wanted to do. I always wanted to draw. I would sit in my room as a recluse and I would just draw and draw. Um, yeah, and so I'm just so fortunate now to have been made it into a career. And it's what I've been doing full time now for about actually almost 10 years. In a while. Wow. Okay. So, how did you make art into a career? Because, as a lot of people know and have experienced, it's not that easy to turn making art into a full time income. So, how did that happen for you? Right. It's not very easy. I always tell people it's not a nine to five, it's a 24 7. So, it's something that, you know, you have to be very passionate and driven about. Um, I wanted to go to art school, but I could never really afford it in my adult life. And um, so I just started taking art jobs right out of high school and I illustrated children's books and I did murals and um, graphic design work and custom portraits and pretty much anything anyone wanted me to do. And it just sort of snowballed. I started joining art collectives online and we would do shows together. So I would get in touch with galleries and um, you know, Instagram was really cool because I put my stuff up and then people would contact me and want to work together and everything. So it just kind of kept rolling and it's awesome. It, it's crazy. You know, I still can't believe that people want to buy my art. <laughs> I'm, like, I just, I'm just this nerdy girl that draws. I don't know if people want to buy my art, but it's awesome. I love it. It's my favorite thing. Okay. So, so really just putting yourself out there, just being persistent. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You just, cause there's a lot, you know, especially with Instagram, there's a lot of artists, there's a lot of people out there, but I think there's a market for everybody and everything. So I think, yeah, just putting yourself out there as much as possible and, you know, joining some groups and just kind of networking, you know, everybody's online. So it's, it's, it's much easier now than I think back in the day when we had to go gallery to gallery and show yeah. off. Like that, so, so do you, do you find um, most of your customers online now um, versus yeah. like in person? Oh, okay. So, yeah, so um, you get more work online than like person to local, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it, um, it varies a little bit. I like to do mm -hmm. local shows too. I do like tent shows where I set up my art. Um, and I started working for uh, Disney World a couple years ago. They do the Festival of the Arts. So I'll go up there and it's a great place to network. So I try to do a little bit of both. I like to do the real world art show. But online too, it's just this ongoing gallery where you can just post you know, as much art as you want and people see it and it's just it's pretty awesome. Um, when did you start Instagram, like start using it like more intentionally to um, share your art? Definitely several years ago. I wasn't like one of the first people on there. I think I had Facebook for much longer, but it's mm. definitely been like a good six, seven years that I've been on probably both platforms. Okay. Um, and sometimes I even like Facebook better because I think mm. you can find 
I don't know, I guess like collectors and buyers a little bit easier. Instagram, everybody's kind of scrolling through and like you get a lot of likes, but it's not as much for business. Whereas Facebook, I think it gets a little more personal and you can message people. Not like Mm. you can't on Instagram, but I don't know. There's just, I guess it's a different clientele. It's a little bit. Okay. Um, All right. Well, that's interesting. But have you found it changed over the last couple of years that you've been using it? Have you seen the social media change for the artist and how no, um it's definitely more saturated there's a lot of competition mm. there's a lot of things going on there's new galleries popping up all over the place and new artists and all these things I guess that would be like my biggest challenge right now is just figuring out where to go forward because as I was coming up you know it was I was getting a lot of followers and it was like you know very exciting and I was meeting a lot of people but it's definitely slowed down and uh-huh. I don't know what the reason for that is um I think maybe um you know everybody's doing like the reels now and the videos and I really haven't like transitioned into that I've tried to do a few of them but everybody's doing all these cool animations you know and everything's virtual and stuff so I think um I think that's the biggest thing it's kind of like transforming from strictly like visuals and images to videos so now you have to kind of like learn new things and Mm. I'm just I've never been tech savvy you know I like taking a picture and posting it on there but now it's like it's so um you almost have to have a graphic design backwards <laughs> background to do yeah. some of these things so. yeah <laughs> it does look like the how is how you get visibility right it's a uh, social media and it's changing um right evolving all, all the time so well do you think that um um, so this is like the quality of your work, like whether do you think the work speaks for itself versus uh, that you have to actively market. And I'm sure it's a, it's a combination of both. But from your experience, like what is uh, like the weight of each, if you, if, like, you know, um, whether it's the quality of your work is more important or the marketing, it, like what, what's, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think it's definitely a little bit of both. You know, there's so many things I feel like, you know, we have to wear so many hats. We have to mm-hmm. make the art, market the art, show the art, you know, do all these things. So um, it's definitely a balance. Marketing has never been my strong suit. I've always tried to just create like amazing quality art and put it out there and hopefully it reaches the right people. But now, you know, with all the algorithms and everything that's, you know, completely different, whereas before Instagram, you post something and it was all in yeah. the chronological order. You'd see everything all throughout the day. And now you know I personally see maybe like the same 10 people like over and over and over yeah. and I, if I want to see someone I have to like type in the name and you know yeah. all the things. so it, it's challenging and so you have to like play with the algorithm you have to post at the right time and you have to post the right hashtags and you know and then also quality and like in the videos and all of these different things so it's just yeah it's become yeah. a little bit more challenging yeah, I feel that too. Like if you, I, that's why when you, um, the artists wear so many hats, that's why I feel like sometimes if, when we want to get the visibility, then because we only have so much time in a day, like the time actually everyone have is finite, right? So you have to prioritize your time. Do you prioritize your time, you know, to um, make the art or improve your skills and, um, or do you spend time uh, marketing your work is kind of, not uh, yes, sometimes so you do, much. <laughs> yeah it's not an easy choice and sometimes I would just rather just not even make like um like sellable work per se sometimes I just want to practice and uh, get back right. to the fundamentals and uh, sure. you know make master copies or take some class from artists I really admire to just get back to the skills and not even worry about selling but then and uh you also want to make some money otherwise right. you know it's not sustainable <laughs> exactly. so I feel like it, like how do you um balance those things um gosh I you know I honestly just take every project as it comes along it mm. really just depends on what it calls for um Luckily, I, I do get a lot of commissions and most of the time they are very fun commissions. People just kind of, you know, they give me the reference photo, but they usually give me free reign, you know, of anything that I want to do. So um, that becomes kind of like a word by, you know, word of mouth kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it just depends on what it calls for. You know, if I'm going to be part of a show, you know, I try to repost things as much as possible, get people interested and things like that. Um, I have a website that I neglect so much. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, again, I'm like, I'm so not a tech savvy person. I wish I could hire someone to do all these things for me. But yeah, it's like, kind of just take every day as it comes. Let me, let me, yeah, you keep going. I'll ask you a question. 
Okay, I want to ask you about commissions, right? Because I do commissions too. And when you talk about your commissions, are people just give you some reference photo and you have free RAM to do whatever you want. And then I have a question because for my commissions, um, probably it's because of the way I market it, then um, this, uh, my client always want a likeness, right? Because it's the, the portrait of them or there's someone else. So what's your commission? Do they, do they require likeness or, or does not matter for your um, commission? It varies. it varies. A lot of times, yes, they want to have either themselves or, you know, so I'm mostly exclusively draw women. So it's a yeah. daughter or something like that. Um, and yes, they want it to look, you know, like them. So they usually give me a lot of photos and I sort of choose the one that speaks to me that I'm inspired by that I could see, mm. you know, building an image around her. Um, and then, yeah, most people, they'll give me like a few other things, you know, she really likes birds or she really likes butterflies or something like that. And I'll put that in there. Um, I've had challenging ones for sure, because sometimes people want to give you these big smiling faces and everything. Yeah, like, oh, <laughs> smiling like, faces. Yeah. Big smiling yeah. faces are harder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's hard because, you know, and I'm like, you look beautiful, but it doesn't always come across like that great in the actual yeah. painting. So, you know, it's kind of got to try and strike a balance with that. But um, yeah, I've had like really good ones. I've had some challenging ones. And uh, again, just kind of take it as it comes. And, you know, they're always okay, different. So, so, so what your, your client, they just give you photos and tell you a bit things of like whether they like birds or um, certain things. And then you can just, they just, um, give you the space to do whatever you want and yeah okay and and do they tell you size as well I assume they would tell you how big they want it yeah I usually just give them sort of like a list of you know popular sizes things that are easy to frame um I give them an option we could do a painting or we could do a drawing um I you know I do a little bit of both so um yeah and I always just try to work within people's budget you know they just kind of tell me like you know kind of what they want and we try to figure out a size and a style and everything to um just fit what they want mm, okay okay so um if it's so for drawing right so what do you consider to be a drawing like your pastels and your pencils they are those like drawings they're still color they're still yeah color, yeah right? so Yes, I do. Um, I do, you know, black and white graphite work, but I also use a new medium called pan pastel. And yeah. it's kind of like a dry watercolor that you apply with sponges. Um, so I really like that. And I do that on like really nice paper. So I could either mm. do something like that, or if they want to do an oil on canvas, then like those are basically the two options. And okay. um, if you look at my work, they are a little bit different. You know, the pastels turn out very soft and then sometimes the oil paintings are definitely much more vibrant um it's just the color palette's a little bit different yeah. but um, yeah it just depends on what they want what kind of look they're going for okay and the price are they different yeah it varies usually by size um uh you know, like difficulty, um, subject matter, you know, if it's just one person, you know, it's not very expensive, but if they want like a whole lot of things added in there, like animals and flowers and all these things, then it goes up from there. So it really varies. It depends. And sometimes, you know, painting too small is sometimes harder than painting really big. Yeah. So yeah, it, it actually kind of, is, you know, yeah, I, I know. have been pricing <laughs> my commission easy. based on size, but I find that it really sometimes painting small can take longer than a bigger one. <laughs> Right, so, I know. Yeah, like yeah. From the client's perspective, they don't like it's irrelevant to them, right? From the so if I was going to buy, I just look at well, the bigger one should be more expensive and smaller one should be cheaper. So I'm kind of right. thinking maybe I should stop doing a small size commissions because <laughs> because for that for that reason, yeah. people from the like totally understand from the buyer's perspective. Of course, like it's like when we buy something, why should a small painting um, cost the same as a as a bigger one, right? Sure. So, yeah, exactly. So yeah, you got to find that like, you know, good balance and, you know, the, the right size because yeah, it, it, sometimes people think that like, oh, if I do just like a tiny little four by six, you know, it's really not going to be that much, but it depends, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. little diamonds are small, but expensive. <laughs> Yeah, that, that takes even so much work um, than, than a big one. Like big ones sometimes are even easier to do than a, than a small one because even if you want to go into some detail, just it's way easier. But anyway, since yeah. we're talking about commissions, um, if you're okay talking about pricing, I'd be really interested to know because like as you talk about the pricing, it's like um, depending on how com like the, uh, the complex com complexity um, of the <laughs> painting, whether it's just a uh, person or this adding more animals, flowers, that kind of stuff, then like, 
So wouldn't that make the pricing a little bit more um, confusing for the client or, or do you have like a standard pricing? Like if it's one person is this way, like how, how does that work for your commissions? Sure, it's, um, I do have some standard prices just because now like I've done so many that I kind of know like a, a, another factor is time, right? Like how long it's actually gonna take to finish it. So now I kind of know, you know, if I do this size and I do, you know, a person and a flower, like it's gonna take me this long and I can charge this much. So I try to keep it as less confusing as possible. Mm. Um, I give them like, you know, some of the popular sizes and, you know, popular themes and things like that. Um, you know, try to keep the options down too. I feel like when people have too many options, it's hard to yeah. make a decision. So, you know, yeah. I give them the popular sizes, but then I also say, hey, I can do bigger, I can do smaller, you know, whatever you like. Um, and obviously, you know, if I come in too high with the price, then I'm like, okay, well, let's just do like a little bit of simpler, you know, style or like one less animal or something like that, or maybe one size smaller, you know, so mm, I'm, just, I'm, okay. really easy. I'm, I'm really easy to work with for that kind of thing. Pricing is, it's so difficult, you know, because mm. like sometimes things take so long and you're just like, well, how do I price something, you know, that takes me like four months to do, you know, it's like, I can't yeah. be ridiculous about it. I can't say it's like, oh, it's like $20,000, but <laughs> you know, you also want to be fair to yourself. So it's difficult. And I try to have so many projects going at once that it's sustainable for me and affordable for the customer. Yeah. Okay. So it's good to have some standard price. Um, and then if the client wants to add on or so negotiate, then you go from that. Yeah. I think it's, I also have a standard price because it's just less confusing and give them some option to yeah. choose from. It probably makes this, makes the sale e easier. Yeah, for sure. Right. I think so. You know, the, the business thing part aside, you know, I think that's, you know, I think for it's straight to the point, the business part, how all that kind of stuff. I want to ask you something that's a little bit more on the um, less practical side. So sure. um, what inspires you? Um, well, I've always painted women. Um, I don't know. I, I just love the feminine energy and, you know, women are so beautiful and obviously, and then I love nature and, and the flowers and the animals and all that. And I think they just go together so well. Um, I don't know why I've always painted women. I just, I remember even in like my notebooks at school, I was just always sketching pretty girls. <laughs> it was just like, yeah. maybe it's, um, you know, Disney inspired little anime kind of thing. You know, there's always just like a, a beautiful heroine. Um, so I've always been inspired to draw women. And now I think I do a lot of, um, like symbiotic relationships so even mm. like, you know, I, I paint a lot of women, but to me, you know, I just kind of see a person and then it's like their relationship with nature and how everything is kind of connected. And, you know, I believe we were always supposed to be friends with the animals. So I draw a lot of women and animals together, you know, like running with horses or, you know, standing next to a lion or one, some, you know, one of these things where I just feel like that's like what we were always supposed to be. And, you know, maybe we can get back there. Yeah, one day. You know what? I, I have um, just my theory about why we like to paint women more mm -hmm. and i feel like because what, what like what is what do artists do what is art supposed to do put beauty uh which is probably an abstract contract into something mm -hmm. that we can visually see right even if or in other forms you can read hear music right so so and i my theory is like women is the embodiment probably in our subconscious or whatever of beauty Right. Like even, yeah. even even in just pop culture, you see, um, regardless of how we think the um uh, the woman should be like the the um social uh, construct of you know how, what sure. a woman should look like, but but still that is the still the underlying um concept or the the understanding that women represent beauty. So I think Absolutely. as artists, if you want if you want to represent beauty, then it's just women that you know whether it's a um you know man or male artist or female artist that we just like to paint women more exactly yeah i think yeah male artists have painted women for you know thousands yeah. of years now too because i think we do we you know we love beautiful things we're drawn to beautiful things and like you said it is subjective you know of course people find different things beautiful but i think there is still we do come together and we do find certain things just exquisitely beautiful right like you could see a perfectly beautiful open rose and you're just like yeah. that's beautiful right you know I think we can all agree on that so I think yeah it's the same with women too and you see like a fragrance ad or something and it's just like this beautiful woman in this dress and, and it's just so pretty it just touches your heart so 
yeah, I think we just, we want to express beauty. Um, and I think that's just, it's just natural. Yeah, and also in your work, there's a lot of nature, right? The uh, steel work that have flowers or even trees. Um, the, there's one I like where you have a girl that have, um, looks like they have tree branches coming out of her head uh, or it's like merged, uh, like you say, a symbiotic relationship. And a nature, Mother Earth, is represented in a female kind of um, term, right? So I think there's also that, um, like that alignment there, how, how, you know, nature is beautiful and nature is often referred to as, uh, as a woman, as female. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's all part of it. And um, I think, yeah, that's probably why I'm just so drawn to merging the two of them together and just showing that relationship, how it's like a woman and it's mother nature and, you know, how it's all just kind of cyclical and everything mm. just kind of like, you know, just kind of flows into everything so else. Have you always, um, Lisa, you always like to paint women, but have you always liked to paint women um, with nature or like how has that changed or evolved through the years? Yeah, that's always been my biggest inspiration. I love mm. painting um, flowers and, you know, I actually, I like taking things that are very small and making them really big and then maybe putting a face in there or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of, yeah. I saw, I saw some of that. Yeah, it's show the beauty of like little tiny things that may be overlooked, you know, and sometimes they're the most beautiful. So yeah, and you know, I don't know, my work is always kind of evolving. I'm always kind of getting inspirations from new things. So I don't know, in the future, it might be different. But for now, yeah, it's pretty much my first love, it's women and nature in some way, um, just all entangled together. Take me through, if you can, um, one of your recent pieces or one of your favorite piece, um, piece how how where do you get inspiration and how do you execute it from start to finish if you can <laughs> sure yeah well again it always varies but generally um i always find a muse first so i yeah. usually find a model um i've been very fortunate i i modeled myself for almost 10 years so i have a lot of wow. very pretty model friends and so i usually would have someone come over and we would do a little photo shoot and then i'd sort of create like a fantasy world around her um, but I meet a lot of people online too, and people send me photos all the time. So I have just like a whole plethora of photos. Sometimes I'm just looking through them. Sometimes an idea comes to me and I'm like, okay, I need someone looking this way and they're going to be like riding on a bird or, you know, something like that. So I find the right muse first. Um, and then, yeah, and then I just sort of let that speak to me and it just depends on like her mood and how, you know, like what I'm feeling from it right away. And then I sort of decide like, okay, like if she's going to be riding on a bird, like I know that right away. And um, sometimes it kind of evolves over the course of the time. Sometimes I have an idea in my head and I start drawing it. You know how sometimes it's not exactly the way that you thought it was going to be. Mm. It's like, hmm, I had like a different mood in my mind, but now that it's on here, I'm like, I don't know if I'm feeling that. So sometimes I just like to kind of like start playing with colors and just sort of see what happens. Um, so yeah, it, it varies. Sometimes I have an exact idea what I'm going to do. And then sometimes it just kind of comes to me after a while. And I, it's taken me anywhere from like a couple weeks to like a couple years to finish painting. So, oh, okay, some paintings can take a couple of years. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so when you say like, say you have your muse and then you develop a fantasy land. So the fantasy land is when you talk about sometimes you know right away, um, or even you had it before you take the photo, what kind of things you want. Sometimes um, you just look at the photos and then they give you. Um, the inspiration is what kind of right. fantasy you want to put it in. Okay. And sometimes the thing that might even change as you start to um, do your sketches. So do you do your sketches um, digitally or do you actually do them on paper? Um, everything's on paper. I, like I said, I'm not a very digital <laughs> person. Like, I feel like I have to be in this world, but if I didn't, I just, I like tangible things, you know, I'm not a big fan of all the like, you know, um, what is it? NFTs and stuff. I mean, maybe eventually, cause I feel like that's just where the future's going, but for now, like I like my tangible tokens. So, um, yeah, everything's on paper and sometimes I sketch and sometimes it just really depends. Sometimes I'll go right into it and start painting. Um, kind of on the piece and like what my inspiration is I usually do try to sketch the face at least and like you know a little bit of the composition just so I know kind of generally where I'm going but um yeah and if it's a drawing I obviously have to sketch it all out first and refine yeah. it erase everything that you know doesn't need to be there but yeah usually okay. it's all on and, paper. And, and I want to ask you um you know what do you think 
um, is the purpose or meaning of art? It is. It's funny, you know, sometimes I call art like the last luxury because you're right, like it's not something that you need to have, you know, it's not clothes, it's not food, it's not shelter, it's not any of these things, but for some reason, you know, we are really drawn to it and we really love it. And I thought, you know, like with the last two years with like COVID, when everything shut down, I was like, oh man, nobody's going to be buying art because everybody has better things to do, right? But I actually found that my business didn't dip at all. It was mm. actually very good pretty much that entire time. And I think, um, I think it's just, in, especially like, you know, if you think of COVID like such like a dark time for the whole world and if people are buying art, then, you know, they just, they want something that's happy and beautiful and just something that adds, you know, some deeper meaning to their life. You know, we don't know why we can do what we do. You know, it just kind of comes naturally to us. It's always come naturally to me. Like I had art teachers, I had, you know, mentors and my mom was a little bit of an artist, but it's just always been inside of me this is just something that I always wanted to do mm. I wanted to create so you know I think it's just it, it's so part it's a big part of us I think for some reason like we are drawn to beautiful things I think yeah um, so there's beauty and also um like you say during these dark times like COVID and that kind of stuff where people still buy art like right you would think that would they have much right. better or urgent or important things to um, spend on with their money but they actually still buy art so I wonder if it's also um, art also connect them uh, with beauty and also hope right so when right. there's um, a sense of hope a sense of connection with something that is not just our immediate environment that make us feel unsafe or whatever uh, recently I was watching a video by uh, uh, professor <laughs> Jordan Peterson I don't know if you have heard of him uh, he sure. Yeah, he, he has a whole um, series of uh, lectures that he talked about um, the stories from the Bible. He talked about art uh, and what is the significance in, of art. He said something, I don't remember his exact words, but basically he said um, art, he also connects with beauty and how beauty is the path or the road to God. And I know you have some experience that we talked about about that. Would you like to share? Sure. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, this art is so emotional and it, it is very hard to explain why we like it and why we're drawn to it. And it's a lot of abstract concepts. Right. So for someone who doesn't believe, you know, sometimes it's really difficult to explain like, well, you know, what is love? What is beauty? You know, why are we so emotional? you know, during these things. Um, mm. But yeah, and I, and I think you're right. I think it comes back to God. Um, you know, we also, I think as artists, we all do it in our different ways, but we strive for perfection and mm. it means something different for everybody. Like I know I do with every piece, you know, I try to get better and I try to grow as an artist and learn a different technique, you know, just to kind of like keep climbing and keep, you know, just trying to achieve like, I guess what in my mind would be perfection. Um, you know, and that's what God is. He's perfect. So it's mm. just really interesting. Um, you know, and I like, I feel like I create because he creates like there's you know there's really no explanation for it like you know there's why would I need to do this you know in a world where um you know I guess everything was just kind of random and didn't mean anything you know you know I feel like we would just be just doing the same things over and over just like ants just like bees you know we would just have our structure and our system and we would do that but there's so much more to this life mm -hmm. and there's so many inexplainable things that um yeah, I mean, it, it definitely, it always points me in the direction of intelligent design and a creator. And I think that's where all of this comes from. Yeah, but you, you don't, you have, like, you didn't always believe this way, do you? No, no, I didn't at all, actually. <laughs> um, growing up, I, I, I wouldn't say I was an atheist per se. I think I always believed, you know, that there was something. I liked mm -hmm. to believe in, like, a spirit yeah. world and um, you know, the, there's so many people that say that they've, you know, seen ghosts and all of these things. Yeah. I always believe that there's like something more, you know, than yeah. what we see. Our consciousness, you know, where does that come from? Like how, like, mm. well, how does this even work? We all, sometimes we get, you know, emotions from other people and things like that. So I always thought that there was something more, but it was really in my um, kind of immediate adult life that I started thinking this way. I just started seeing all these patterns, um, especially my, my second love right now is gardening. And we've been mm. growing food forest in my backyard and front yard. And um, it's just, so incredible to watch these things like they know exactly what they're going to be they're just the seed is already programmed to be 
whatever it's going to be. And mm. it's just, it's so fascinating. Um, there's, um, I, I'm not, so I, I did like recently just start studying all of these things. Um, just, I became fascinated with history, um, you know, trying to just like dig back to our roots and like see where we all came from and how all of this came to be, um, social structures and everything. And um, yeah, yeah, here I am now. I'm like, I'm very, very spiritual. I definitely believe in a God and I've been reading the Bible and everything like that. And um, if I would have talked to myself, like, I don't know, 20 years ago when I was in high school, I probably would have just laughed and it would have been the most ridiculous thing. It's like, oh, the Bible, oh my gosh, another system of control and all of this stuff. But I don't know, it's so much more than that. And I think a lot of people if they actually took the time to look into it and then pass judgment on it, I think, you know, they would probably reach the same conclusions as me, but unfortunately, I don't know, it's, everything's just been turned into a giant meme and everybody already has their mind meme made up about like what everything is and it's difficult <laughs> to, Yeah, you know, I want to ask you because it's um, like the last couple of years is a, you know, has been a change, a shift for a lot of people and I, um, I had actually tried to, like, I actually did Bible studies with different kind of religious body, um, Christian groups, and I never really felt a connection. In my um, mind, probably, I still think of religion as a tool of population, like a mind control tool. Um, right. you know? yeah. So I've also believed there's something more that we don't see. And, and if we try to read the Bible, it's not that easy to understand. When I read the Bible, I still, I can see it at the at face value what it is. But how do you actually go beyond that? Like people that also say it's a code and you need a key to unlock it to really right. understand it. And yeah. like, how do we even begin then if you don't want to um, go through the churches and, and if you don't want to be um, part of the, the system of control, but you want to develop right. your individual, like your own relationship with God. Like, how do you go about that? Right. Yeah. I actually have kind of a, a similar path. I originally, yeah, I started out doing Bible studies with groups of people and my husband and I tried out different churches and it just it mm. never felt quite yeah. right. I don't know. We just didn't really click with the people. And I found that the services kind of lacked substance. You know, I mm. wanted to know not only about the ancient past, which they, they do teach some of that, but they really don't go into a lot of detail. And then I wanted to know how it applied to today. You know, how did we get here? And how does it explain our entire state of being, whether, um, you know, it, it's, it's people, how we interact, why are there so many bad things in the world? Why is there so much pain in the world, you know, but why are there also so many good things in the world, you know, because you can't look at the bad without yeah. the good. So I think I took it from like, where my interests were and so that was nature and mm. creation and I wanted to know whether we were created or evolved and that was kind of like where my journey started because that was something that really really interested me so I started doing a lot of history and simultaneously reading the bible and and you're right and it is very difficult and it is kind of a code and it's like some books i've read so many times already in the bible because the bible isn't just one book it's 66 yeah. books written Daniel by books. 40 people over 4000 years and it just yeah. all comes together in one story quite miraculously actually um and every book relates to every other book and then there's like codes and things and other books that go to other books so it is like knowing where to start is really crazy and most people start yeah. in genesis because it's the beginning um uh, mm -hmm. but it's probably one of the most difficult books because there's so much in it in every single sentence in every scripture there is just so much that um people a lot of times just either write it off as fantasy or just say like, oh, this is too hard. I don't really want to dig into all of this. So I don't know, just the long and short of it, I guess, is just find something that interests you and start there. Like if you're really interested in like our times now, I would start with the New Testament and go forward from there. If you're interested in say like, there's women in the Bible too. You know, there's two women that have their own books and they're incredible stories about women and loyalty and courage and, and just all of these amazing things. Um, and then there's books about all kinds of other things. You know, if you need, um, if you need any help, just like spiritually pick me up, so, you know, these kinds of things There's stuff for that too. Um, 
But I also, I balance it with watching a lot of videos and things too. I like to watch scholars. I like to watch, um, you know, professors, these people them studying these things for, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, and they're up there giving their knowledge. And then I apply it to what I've already learned. Um, and it just kind of keeps going from there. Um, and yeah, I watch lots of different people and, um, you know, I'm still trying to find my group of people, I guess. I've built like a good online community of people that I really like to talk to about these things. Um, but locally, I haven't really, um, I don't know, I'm just not a huge like church person. I wish people would just maybe come into the house and just have like conversations. Yeah, you know what, to, um, you I know. actually locally very recently um, found like my chiropractor, which uh, I found them very recently and they actually have uh, very similar views as mine which is very different from the majority of people that I know locally or online um, that verbally say uh, express their views uh, you know on the vaccines mm -hmm. or on the COVID uh, uh, pandemic and all that kind of stuff like very rarely that I find people that <laughs> you know agree right, with I know. what I see <laughs> so so my chiropractor um, their whole family are on the same page and will agree on these kind of things and turns out they um, believe in God too and they also don't go to like quote-unquote church and what they do is like what well, you say they have a local um, like four or five four families where they just host their Sabbath um, on rotation so yeah. and and I think that is beautiful <laughs> oh yes yeah we live in a crazy world and you know there's not a lot of things that science can explain you know it can, it can explain some of it for sure and it's definitely important but there's a lot more that's just that's spiritual that's happening right now and um yeah it, it's crazy <laughs> crazy yeah, times right yeah, now yeah yeah it, it is quite crazy and I think probably a lot of people um uh, uh you know I've talked to some other uh uh, artist and also they were atheist or or they are into the new age right the because as an artist I don't think you can totally believe there's nothing out there otherwise how how where where yeah. does your idea how, come from how do it? Yeah. <laughs> right it does not just generate like between your ears it, it, there's something yeah. um so so the, uh, a lot of artists even though they don't believe they that did not yet believe in the quote unquote the, the God in the Christian kind of uh, uh, way, but they will always believe there's something more. Um, and I find some of them have actually, actually returned to the Bible. And probably they are not interpreting it as what's been taught in the church, um, that kind of way, but it's always talk about like your own relationship with God. Or I think uh, the, the word God also probably because of the so many years and uh, how uh, how religion even the, the, or the Catholic the Christian religion has actually been used as a tool of control and people sure. have this um, resistance and even develop some kind of like dislike for that word and I think it's a I, I, I'm not sure if it is this is a way to actually push people away from uh, from a way to make meaning out of chaos, right? Actually to push people into chaos and push people away from order so that for whoever want to orchestrating all this, they then have more power because the mass is in chaos and they have no order to orient towards themselves. Yeah, so yeah, because people, you know, when they look at organized religion, they do see a lot of corruption. They see mm. a lot of hypocrisy. They see yeah. a lot of abuse of power in so many different ways right and I think that is kind of what happens in this world you know once you climb up these ladders and once you reach a certain amount of power the other powers that be aren't going to leave you alone you know so mm. it's like you either join their power structure or you're going to fade away so a lot of people end up you know selling out for lack of a better word you know you yeah. have a lot of these televangelists and all these people and you know what I found in my experience though is a lot of these people don't actually teach the bible you know you'd think that mm. like because they're christians they're catholics their go-to reference material would be the bible right what else would there be but yeah, I found that you know they sort of take the gospel or any part of the bible and they they twist it you know and they make it into something that maybe you know soothes their narrative or sells something or you know there's a I don't know. There, there's so many examples. I can't even think of one right now, but I think people know what I'm talking about when mm -mm. it's just, you know, so many things have just kind of been perverted. So I don't know. For me, I went back 
to the word of God. I wanted to read it for myself. And yeah, like we said, I mean, it is, it's difficult and you don't really know where to start. And Mm. I tried to read certain books at certain times. And I feel like maybe like my mind wasn't ready for it or something. Cause like it literally might as well have been in an alien language. Cause it was like, nothing made sense at all. <laughs> I was like, this doesn't make sense. I don't know where to start here. But I find like the more I dig, like the, you know, cause that's what it's all about, right? God asks you to seek him. You know, he says like, seek me and I will present myself to you. So I think that's like what it's all about. You know, we're all on this journey right now I think there are a lot of people for whatever reason that have become very spiritual lately like myself like I never thought that I would you know be a bible reading you know person (laughs) you know all this stuff because I I don't know growing up like my my dad's Jewish my mom is orthodox Russian um we lived in the communist ukraine at the time before yeah. the wall fell and everything so there was no religion you know religion was all but completely exterminated they didn't want yeah. people to be religious. they wanted people to be part of the state you know that was the yeah whole like thing. china you where i come yeah. from yeah yeah exactly so you know my parents didn't raise us i mean they raised us with great values you know we are yeah you know, we're a strong family you know we're a small family but great values they always you know just they kept us straight and everything um but they kind of laughed at all that stuff you know especially yes. my dad oh it's, it's ridiculous yes. it's fantasy yes. fairy tales you know like just nonsense so that's how i felt yeah. it. i was like oh these fantasy fairy tales and these people that believe them are crazy but i just yes. like the more i look into it there's so much evidence for all of yeah. these things and it's really really mind-blowing um it's you know it's crazy like i i wouldn't even know like exactly where to start but I just think that like if you if you want to see God like he will find you like that's usually how this works like he knows he knows that you're trying to seek him and he'll present himself to you and it's not going to be like my path it's not going to be like anybody else's path it's going to be completely your own and um it's just like that individual time where you're you know searching for him and then also group time and then yeah I think it's so important to find a group of people that you can just have intimate conversations with Mm. I don't think you have to be in this big fancy auditorium somewhere with this everybody's dressed in suits and ties and stuff you know all this pomp and circumstance for no reason um you know I think like you can literally I think we should just talk about it more you know nobody talks about God anymore and it's very unfortunate because I think it's obviously a really big part of our world and I think we've as a people we've just we've fallen so far from that yes yes and and sometimes you will um people will probably even ridicule or try to embarrass you for if you talk about these kind of things in, sure. in, in public, even online, right? Depending on the oh, uh, group you are in, unless you are in the conservative group, then yeah, this uh, is the norm. But if you are right, yeah. not in there, it's especially in, I find that the artist community is more like a liberal, com- more, people are naturally more um, liberal, right? In the, in the artist community. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah. I think people could be really mean. And, and it's so strange because like the, the message of Christianity in general is a very, very positive one. It's, you know, a lot of the things that people know, you know, love, love thy neighbor and like do all these things, you know, that are actually very, very nice and noble and beautiful. So it's really strange to see like how angry people get sometimes, right? It's like actual, like real anger. They like, they hate this actor now because he's in this movie and it's very unfortunate. And especially, yeah, it's in, in Hollywood where everybody's supposed to be tolerant and new ideas and like you know everything's supposed to be accepted it seems like there are certain things that are definitely not accepted and not only are they not accepted they're ridiculed and it's you know almost becoming this like new thing to just completely discredit and just dislike Christian people and like I you know I I think I told you before I'm not a big label person I don't really like all the labels because I just feel like as soon as someone says like oh I'm a Christian you know it's like everybody develops this opinion about you how you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to do and if you fall short of that at all then they're like whoa well you are supposed to be a Christian so yeah like like I think this label is really limiting like even uh, even the label of feminist right or radical feminist is so limiting like uh, as soon as you say that you're supposed to be this way like and or even we'll say if you don't support Amber Heard and you believe in Johnny Depp then you can't say you're a feminist I mean like uh, I mean there's there's so many um yeah so many trivial expectations that people just like started to use that label to um limit like what you can or cannot uh, have an opinion on so that's why I like even the Christian Catholic um, all these labels, it can be 
either in any ways uh, limiting you, whether people they are actually Christian and Catholic or people who are not or who doesn't like that religion, they can both uh, place what you can or cannot do because of, <laughs> of that label. So I, I totally understand why you don't like labels. It's so uh, limiting. Yeah, right? and it's not that I don't like talking about it. I'll talk about it with anybody who wants to listen. It's one of my favorite conversations, you know? This is like my huge interest right now. But I don't like, you know, I'm, I'm not very public on my social media. I'm actually pretty private. I usually just post artwork or, you know, just like shows or things coming up like that. Because I just, I usually just like to stay out of everything. You know, everybody has an opinion. Everybody has like, you know, their own thing going on. There's all these clicks forming, you know, and you have to either conform, like you have to be like the perfect artist and believe in all of these things that all these other artists believe in, or, you know, they all mm. shun you. And, and it's yeah. just really unfortunate because like, I would never do that to any of them, even though I'm sure there's things that we disagree about. Um, so yeah, it's like, as soon as you put it out there that, oh, you know, I'm Christian and I'm, you know, do this and that people start to look at you like, oh, well then you just make Christian art. Like that's so boring. You know, I don't even want, <laughs> you know, so I try to like, I try to be a little sneakier about it and try to maybe like, you know, just put no, the I, I actually saw your, in your Instagram <laughs> post. You have, um, the scripture, like, um, of the gospel in, in yeah. um, one of your posts. And, and I like, I actually really like reading that. Like just see, oh, see yeah. what Julius is re re reading. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I'm trying to do it a little bit more, but only here and there, you know, I don't want people to like get turned off by it. And again, it's not because I don't want to put it out there, but I just, I love to reach a really broad audience. And I have yeah. that, you know, I have so many different people of all different backgrounds and ages and everything. And I would rather introduce ideas gently in a way that mm. anybody can understand you know through beauty through the power of nature and through the power of women and all of this um you know instead of doing like blatant you know I guess I don't, I don't even know Christian art I'm not even sure what Christian art would be this these days like I know there, <laughs> there was a huge Christian art movement but now everything Unfortunately, I don't know. A lot of things are very dark. <laughs> like there's, yeah. there's a lot well, of Well, you know, that's why right I now. really love your art because your art is very light, right? It's like okay. very light. And, and also, like I say, you like to um, send your message to the world through this more soft and gentle way. But soft and gentle doesn't mean it's not powerful. And I feel like your art is beautiful in the soft, gentle way, but also is powerful. You. Yes, that's a really great compliment. I love that. Because yeah, I just, you know, I want to reach everybody. I want everybody to be able to come, you know, to do this path their own way. I don't want to necessarily, you know, beat anything into anybody's brain. This, this life is, you know, your own to walk, however you want to walk it. But if I can introduce some beautiful, loving themes that are biblically based that do come from like a Christian background um you know I want to be able to do that so I don't know I feel like like my art is always kind of transforming and maybe next year you know I, I will do like you know biblical art or something <laughs> I don't know I don't know I, it depends like I have some ideas in my head but again they would be things that are kind of like subtle themes you know just things that like everybody can enjoy um mm. you know I just yeah I try to keep it light and beautiful to wrap this up tell us where people can find you obviously I will list all your links in the description and also tell people if they want to purchase your art the prints or commissions tell us how they can find you Sure. Um, you can reach me. Um, my social media and my website is always my name, Julia Gabriella. So whether it's Instagram, Facebook, website, um, juliagabriella.com, feel free to email me or shoot me a message on social media. I'm usually always available for commissions. There might be a rare time where I have too many, but generally I'm always available and I have art for sale on my website and I'm always creating new art. So just follow, follow along on Instagram or Facebook or something. <laughs> 